What's Bam. Napa saying this year, though? What, what's who saying? Napa, no, what's Napa, Napa saying this year? Napa saying Napa is massive. The people who are in London, they're not even ready. They don't know. <laughs> you got to come out and change the mentality system. Trust me. First, you get off the plane at Larnaca. You get a cab to Ayanapa. Go straight to a club called Insomnia. Go straight to the bar, drink a Zambuka. I remember I could still do the skip gang and screechy, and I could still ride my moped home safely. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> bat, 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 bat. That's how Ayanapa starts. Come, come, come on. Ibiza was for like the house, but when you got to Napa, it was like. Yeah, this is like for, this is for garage. This is for us, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was very sexy, very lavish, very lush, very bougie. It was a place to be, like, if you missed that era, you missed out big time. Trust me, that's all I can say about that. Them days, it was mad, it was mental. Like, the square was definitely the go-to place. Like, you knew that if you go there, you're gonna link someone you know. Every bar was rammed. We used to just stand on the steps of Marinello's with the who's who. Walking down that hill to the square, and all of a sudden, it was a sea of people. It used to be so jam-packed. It was like carnival, like you couldn't even move. You just have to, like, queue up and walk like this to get through the square. It became urban in the sun, if you like. I've never seen so many of that type of culture, my culture, away together. What is this thing, you know? Like, we never saw anything like it. It was, it was amazing to us. We got BJ S, Kiri and Alpesh. They're the ones that made it happen in Napa to start with. Let's not get that twisted. He will be one of the reasons that Iron Apple became that destination for Garage because he was the first promoter to go out there. I was getting married in 1998. We went on our honeymoon to Cyprus and I decided to bring my record box with me. I was loving it, being in another country, DJing. Mrs. didn't mind. She knew what I was involved in. 98, cool club. Yeah, I remember that club, was, it was banging. And Nick Power, he was the man. Ayanapa used to be a fishing village with not very much happening here. A handful of hotels, a few restaurants and bars and uh, very, very few clubs. So 95, we took over a club that hadn't worked at all in the three years it was open. Opened it up as the cool club. We stuck with the music that, that we knew the best, which was good underground dance music, more sort of on the US side of, uh, of garage, not garage, as it's known now. And Nick Power's a legend, being a separate himself. He used to go and do events there, but S done garage, and garage was us. I was approached by Finos and Linos Malas. They were the owners of Pazaz Club, Black and White Club, a very powerful family. I said, look, I know you're here on your honeymoon. I want you to start Pure Silk this Friday. He called me the week before and said, you know, what are you doing next Friday? And then I phoned Creed. Come on, bro. I'm in. Obviously, at this stage, it's kind of a risk. We weren't sure whether, basically, we were going to fill it. We attracted around 900 to 1,000 people. It was the first time that a garage promotion had, had gone to Cyprus. That was the birth of what would be a magical five years for our music. '99 was was a big year. I think it elevated Garage to another level, and 
really opened us up to a whole new audience. Marcel, uh. but basically, people used to get it confused. Because everyone thought he was saying, I am Alpha, I am Alpha. You know, some people went with higher that month, some people went with higher that I just left it to whatever they wanted it to, to be, you know. Napa made the record, and the record made Napa. It worked both ways. The genre itself was elevating as well, so we was all elevating together. Everyone was equal. Like, it was... There was no really hierarchy of anyone, whatever, whatever. I'd see S, I'd see Spoonie, I'd see Carl Brown, I'd see whoever. I would say the Gary scene came together here. Go on, Viper. Oh, wow. Tell me, man, how long, how, how long have you been on this island? Four weeks. Just... When you going home, man? Because I, I, I was in Club 10 the other day, man, and, like, <laughs> they, were, they were missing you, Jed. <laughs> and it just spread like wildfire. Walking around from 97 to, to 2000, it went from dirt and mostly to pavement, brick. They were earning some dough off this scene, yeah. Do you really like it? We're loving it, loving it, loving it. We're loving it like this. Do you really like it? Is it, is it wicked? We're loving it, loving it, loving it. We're loving it like that. Now, Mr. Pied Piper had to be different from the whole rest. What we have here is something very extraordinary. All right. The moped. May I have a new dance with a car, the moped. This dance, air run, iron up a red. Everyone had a moped, everyone. And it, it kind of made everyone equal. It wasn't like someone turning up in like a Porsche. Everyone was on a ped. This dance I want, I and up a red. You know, you drive past a restaurant and you know the special is there because you just see, see their bikes you outside. see the full bikes outside. Yeah. There was no drinking and driving laws in there. Jeez, my gosh. The man's going up and forth, back and forth. Remember, we're showing up. The curbs come out of nowhere. Bam! I scraped the life out of myself. That was a madness. We were making the Greeks so much money, they wouldn't let me off the island. Remember, man was bruised up, I was dead, I thought I was, I thought I was dead. And they wouldn't let man leave the island. <laughs> when we first got here, we were staying at, at the Margarita Hotel, which is like above Pizzazz. Free star, if you're lucky. This whole upstairs, which is, a, which is the Margarita Annex, up here you'd have Spoony, Creed, EZ, um, Heartless Crew, Heartless Crew were notorious up here. It's not really a hotel, it's like a block. Nice rooms, but there's all rubbish. Go to brush my teeth and realise the room is full of ants. By the end of it, we were staying in like a five star. Now I'm thinking I'm like, shit. Yeah. Like, look at me, this is like, like towels and everything. Things have changed. Things definitely changed in our Napa. And my business class, first class. Thank you. Yes, I would have. To them garage, man, travel, business class. Most of the clubs were owned by two or three operators at the time. Politics were rife because it was only three months of trade. So if you're working for Frenos and Lenos and you go to one of George's bars because your friend's MC in there, George will get the security to chuck you out because you're going to be at Finos and Lunas' club and he doesn't want you stealing any of his customers. If I was wearing a Liberty T-shirt and I went into a bar that was owned by a club that I wasn't in, I've got a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Martin, you've got to leave. We've only like the kind of like hierarchies out there. There is this kind of mafiosa kind of vibe out there. If you was in with the right people, like the Malas family, I mean, you could pretty much get away with everything. Big George, such a boy George. Yeah. When we run in late for the airplane, my man called and actually made the airplane wait for us. That's how <laughs> much we had iron up a lot them times. Yeah. Remember, like, it was a different level of thing there, man. We got treated like kings. We had the game of football on the beach. I remember MC Kai scored a hat trick. Again, <laughs> against the footballers, yeah, that, I do remember that. You virtually had an England squad in, in, in Cyprus. I remember Spoonie saying that they think we're as famous as them. He said that they didn't give a shit that they missed the World Cup because they, kept, they could go to Ayanapa. We are in Ayanapa. Missy Beach. Missy Beach. Missy Beach. 
and some girl come out, come out of there and someone pisses the sea at it and they just come out with some nasty rush. And I call it Pissy Beach. <laughs> Last year we set a precedent and it was a lot better. We set a precedent. But as I said, we have only been a bit three days. But last year was We set standards for everyone to follow. You know why? We set trend. We don't follow trend. It's time this time we come for recommend. <laughs> This is my friend, the CKP. CKP is a garage MC. He talks in rhythm and he talks in rhyme. That's what he does to earn a dime. He won the awards because he's the best. He had to beat some tough contest. Now I'm with him to learn the trade. I hope one day to make his grade. <laughs> And I look in the crowd, and I'm like, hold on, that's a kid. Everyone started making a big noise, like, this little kid, 11 years old, but he's here raving in Iron Apple. It's not heard of, you, you wouldn't see that in England. Look, stop the music, bruv. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Because you know why? I've got to give up some props. Major props. The one we call Little Charlie. This is a madness. And on that night is where we named him, or I Charlie. named him, our mascot, the specialist mascot, Little Charlie. So that's when Little Charlie was born. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was like the talk of the town. I was walking through like the square, and people were stopping me for like loads of photos and autographs and stuff. Like that. It was like, well, I didn't know what was happening. But after being in the club all night, I wanted to party on. Like, you know, I want to carry on being on stage, little Charlie dancing around. I wanted to go to Insomnia because everyone was going there, and I didn't know too much in terms of why I wasn't allowed in there and stuff like that. That was the club there where. No matter what club you went to before, everybody just ends up in insomnia. It's like that magnet after party for anybody who's anybody on the island. Whatever club you was booked for, you couldn't really play in another club, but insomnia was for everyone. No one ever got paid to do insomnia, but Problem. everyone would go Problem. there. Problem. Who? From, from Boran B. He was the resident. the resident. Everyone's going to see you at insomnia because that's where everyone's going at the last, last knock-ins. My boss, Jamboree, was loving every minute of it because I'm getting all the big boys to come down and they're playing for nothing. If you came to Iron Apple and you saw this big Greek guy, muscly geezer, who used to never wear a top, Ever. that was Costas, Jamboree. Man, I had a monkey in the back of the top. <laughs> Sick. You couldn't write it. I never met I the didn't monkey. Meet the monkey That's the truth. That's the truth. I didn't meet the monkey. You, when you are a DJ, you're going to play music, yes? yes. When you are in the restaurant, you're going to be a cook. But when you are in Anaba, you're going to be a Tarzan. Or otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> you cannot survive. He was telling me he's opening up a restaurant. Yeah. Every gangster opens up a restaurant. <laughs> when they finish with the life, every gangster opens up a restaurant. Go father you know four. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. Cost us his secret room. Yeah, man, a lot, a lot of shit went down in that secret room, man. Who told you about the secret room? Never went in that room. Yeah? Didn't who even know. Who told you? Who told you that? Room. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, we start where we finish. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you about the secret room. <laughs> it's meant to be secret, blood. I definitely went into the secret room in Insomnia, um, and it was like Narnia in there. <laughs> it's like, come here. Like, and this is just at the beginning of everyone's coming in. And he's gone like that, and it's like the shelf where you put your drinks, there's like what is a wall, put your drinks there, blah, blah, blah. And he's gone bang like that. And his door's just open. He's like, come, come in, come in here. I'm like, what the hell is this? The DJ box is just there. It's gone like that, and then you're in this room. What was it, sir? Bad, bad, big, but massive. Drum kit. Drum kit. Drum kit. Drum kit. Of course. The joke about it was, right, that room. That's where Jamboree used to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that was his, his bedroom. bedroom. When you stood in that room, it's got double glass. So you can see everyone in the rave, but they can't see you. Oh, oh you was, oh, was, was a two-way. Oh, was that's how you was, OK. <laughs> 
if you want to be naughty like some guys were naughty back in the day, you know, say taking girls in there and all that. Listen, I'm going to be truthful here. This is Iron Apple we're talking about, yeah? But then, watching the Ravens raving. That's a bit mad, isn't it? Half the party every day, yeah. rave every day, square every day, moped every day. Nothing already, oh, nothing already, nothing already, nothing already. So silly about to take over. <laughs> what you laughing at? I got 21 seconds to flow. I got 21 seconds to go. The unofficial mayor of Ayanapa, yeah? The official mayor of Ayanapa, but the unofficial mayor of Ayanapa, if you get what I mean, you know what I mean? There's a presence, man. Whenever we touched the island, there was a presence, man. And I was there, man, ready. Ready to take over this shit. Right now, we are in the Sosa Le Villa. Come follow me. I'm not sure who's in, so right now we're trespassing, all right? This was my room. Okay, so as soon as you come through the door, this room was my room here. Yeah. Keep it from here, you got the kitchen here. 2000, 2001. This is where it all began. 21 seconds, 21 seconds, 21 seconds. 21 seconds. 21 seconds. Just a bunch of crazy youths, uncontrollable, lawless, don't care. That's what everybody says about things they don't understand. I wanted the streets to become superstars. I wanted everybody in the streets to become superstars. And Iron Apple was an outlet for us. Like everyone was saying, so solid. Beef, we're so solid. Police, we're so solid. From the So Solid roundabout to the So Solid Square, and from yeah. the So Solid Square <laughs> to the So Solid Pub, and from the So Solid Pub to the So Solid Rave, and from the So Solid Rave <laughs> to the So Solid After Party. Oh, uh, come in, baby. Get on nice, like, let, let the letters. Sniper So Solid. I mean, Sniper joined So Solid because Mega was clever. Mega became part of the biggest club family on the island. Yeah, and, Me and Mega thrived off that yeah. as well. These are the guys that you, you really need to be working with. They're the biggest family out there, basically. They 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 own pretty much a large share of Iron Apple. Sniper was like, oh, my dad's got clubs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, to me, it was like a match made in heaven for us to be on this island. And to have Sniper in your crew, you felt untouchable. Yeah. One time, I remember my man was in the police station. Yeah. <laughs> and I walked in. I was a teenager. I walked in, and what did I say? How did you? He walked into the police station. I'll never forget it, man, because he walked into the police station. <laughs> and I was getting interviewed, innit? He looked at me, he looked at the police officer, handed me the keys. He said, Mega, wait in the car. I'll take you from here. From that day, it's like the police and the security had a different sort of outlook on me as an individual. In your face, baby. And then you had like the army police that came over and one of the guys came up to me and said, he, he knows me. And he says, Mega, look, I don't want no problems on this island, yeah? If you can keep down all the problems, you will never see us. I'm just talking about young teenagers at the time, man. Uh, 18, 19 years old. So if I'm, if I'm like one of the oldest in the crew, then my brothers and the DJs were actually 16. Sniper, Trigger, they were 14. And I mean 15 years old at the time. Tassos, tell them, tell them who you are, man. I'm an investigator detective for police in all the area. Control the place about it. And, and how, was, how was the times when Soul Solid was about in Iron Upper, man? What was it like? Running, running 100 meters after him, <laughs> sprinting. <laughs> couldn't blame Mega because for him to control that. Mega could control what goes on in his club night. If there was going to be issues in there, he would talk to someone and say, not in here, whatever. And that's what he could do it. To do with the island, I don't think it's possible. So Channel 4 came out here to film a documentary called Fantasy Island. And I remember calling back home and telling them that you're Channel 4, but they're telling me that Channel 4 is all going to be about scandal. Did it give Garage a bad name? Probably. 
reality TV. That was kind of the the, the, ad, the, the start of reality TV. Is designed to shock. It's designed to be entertaining. I remember my mum watching it and be like, is that what you get up to out there? And I'm like, all these places are showing, I don't even know where they are. And then you get these people that aren't really into the scene or don't really love the scene, but they want to come along because they've heard it's the in thing. And ultimately, their intentions aren't good, and then they spoil the vibe. I could smell things starting to change from that moment onwards. The change had more to do with the music than, than anything else. Get in. What I loved about Raven to Garage music was that it was light and bubbly and happy and, you know, everyone was smiling. But then you had these darker beats which were quite ominous sounding and quite dark. <laughs> Being like a rebellious teenager, you want to talk about your experience in life. So at the end of the day, that kind of clashed a bit with the original love message. It's not about just having all of it sounding the same. It's about the balance, and that's what makes it really nice. It's made the darker, darker, and that makes the, the light tunes even sweeter. When you're listening to hip hop, when you go to a rave, you're going to spit different. You're going to put stories into it, lifestyles into it, total different thing, man. So subsequently, what came about was this kind of grimy version of garage music, which then became called grime. Grime is a bit more fluffy now, but them times there it was kill and murder and some kind of hype tea. It was the birth of the screw face and like the gun fingers, like you never really had that before. You know, the youngers, they're thinking, look mate, we're, we're being us. Like, we're just trying to like express ourselves. In it, nobody's wrong. I would have loved for them to be more supportive. I didn't come here to make a new genre. I come here to be a part of something. I wish if I'd kind of held my hand out a bit more and kind of tried to take them under, under, under my wing a bit and maybe speak to them a bit more about things instead of like, you know, um, just leaving it, leaving it to get, to get the way that it got. People that were coming there were coming there full on. So you weren't coming with your girlfriend, they weren't coming with just with their girlfriend, they were coming with their old crews. And all of a sudden you had gangs coming from Birmingham, Manchester, London, South London, East London, North London, I mean, and, then it, and they're all in one little place. And so there used to be some really big, ferocious fights in the square, like crazily, like, windows smashed, chairs thrown, and it was a whole thing with the Birmingham boys and the London boys. It was just ridiculous. And it used to just kick off, like, nearly every night it was kicking off. And it just became like being at home on the streets. We kind of got the feeling at that stage that, like, it was... that... We got, we got the feeling that... that something bad kind of was going to happen. The island didn't help itself because every shop you went in, you could buy a flick knife. So you imagine carrying a knife fueled with so much alcohol. The high profile thing was the Dizzy Rascal incident. Yeah. We all know what happened at the end of the day. And subsequently, the mayor at the time, she was just like, that's it, no more garage. And she banned garage for two years in Ionapa. I think that might have been the catalyst because she said, look, it's just the wrong people coming here. That's what killed our scene. It wasn't, you know, anyone had got sick of the music or got bored of Garage. No, it was straight up this. Our scene is a club-based scene. If there are no clubs, then there's nowhere, there's nowhere to play the records. So then the producers leave, the promoters have all gone. Then what is left? All you're left with is artists and no club. So that is what killed UK Garage. <laughs>
when people say to you, think of a happy place, Ayanapa is my happy place. It was an escape here. Like, we, we felt so comfortable here. It was just a legendary time, a legendary phase. Everything happened yeah. like a chain reaction kind of thing, and it's, it was amazing, man. If I didn't come on my honeymoon and I didn't bring my record box, what would have happened in Ayanapa? Would, would we have still had a garage island? I believe Iron Apple was a true reflection of UKG at its height, top, the apex of UK garage. Some people spend their time just running away from what's right. And I sure don't want to run. And I sure don't want to run from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is what I could do. My love, so good. My love, it's just for you. My 